A few days back, I released a video detailing some of the historical accuracies in the world of Red Dead Redemption 2, and a lot of you guys in the comment section happily came forward asking for more. As I began to piece together a second video, I soon realised that one of the subjects I wanted to include had so many individual real-life inspirations that I thought it deserved an entire video of its own. Welcome, you're listening to Phil of Philby Gaming, and in today's content we're going to be looking into the historical accuracies and real-life inspirations behind the city of Saint-Denis, which in case you weren't aware is heavily based on the late 19th century setting of New Orleans, Louisiana. If you guys enjoy what you see today, you all know what to do. And with that being said, let's get straight in to today's video. In the map description of Saint-Denis, it states the following about the city. A lively, 200-year-old melting pot city where industry magnates, socialites, traders, sailors, workers, beggars and thieves all live side by side. It is by far the largest settlement in not only Red Dead Redemption 2, but in the entire of the Red Dead series in general. From its market area, to its active filled main strips, its in-city tram system, its small farm holdings on the outskirts, to the accurate wealth divide, just to name a few. Its real-life counterpart of New Orleans was very much the same in the latter end of the 1800s, so let's take a look at some real-life photographs and artist illustrations and compare them to the busy city known as the Jewel of Lemoyne. Unlike most in the game, the hitching posts of Saint-Denis are different in the fact that they are designed as horse heads. They are based upon the real hitching posts that were an attraction during the late 19th century in New Orleans. These unique hitching posts still stand today as a nod to the history of the city, although there are of course not many horses using them. Another thing that separates Saint-Denis from the other settlements are the differences in their street signs. Where most are pinned up on posts in this city, they are embedded on the pavements. New Orleans began using this design in the mid-1880s, they were put in place to allow coach drivers, whose slow pace allowed for plenty of time and the correct vantage point, to look down on the street in front of them. Whilst we're talking about pavements in Red Dead Redemption 2, you may have noticed that on the side of roads there are concrete slabs put in place. The reasoning behind this was for horse-drawn carriages to pull up and allow their female passengers to exit without dirtying their dresses on the filthy cobblestones. This is something that may have been used throughout many real-world cities, but it was definitely included in New Orleans. The tram, or trolley, in Saint-Denis allowed passengers to travel throughout the city without needing to walk or riding their horse. It provided more convenience. Most players will know of this from the Urban Pleasure mission during Chapter 4 of the game. In April of 1831, the Pontarchain Railroad Company established the first rail service in New Orleans. Although they were originally pulled by horses, as engines hadn't arrived from England just yet, it was only around a year or so before they became motorised. This travelling system is still used in New Orleans as of today. The Theatre Rallo is a popular pastime in Red Dead Redemption 2, as players can view a total of seven different performers, such as singer Robin Kaninsky, magician Benjamin Lazarus, or the fire-breathing Antoinette Sansevierino. This theatre was heavily based on the New Orleans French Opera House, which was a popular city landmark located in the French Quarter. It opened its doors to the public in 1859, but unfortunately was destroyed in a fire 60 years later in 1919. In the more southern area of Saint-Denis, players can both discover and purchase from a market stall on the water's edge of the Lanahassee River. Interesting side note, there's actually a stall here that most didn't realise you could access. The layout of this market is heavily inspired by a real setting in New Orleans, 
known as the French market. If you compare the game's location to its counterpart, you will see that the two are practically identical. As John Marston quotes, during his time in Saint-Denis, the cemetery is impressive. Instead of standard gravestones or simple crosses, the cemetery houses large graves, most of which are placed above ground and are inhabited by the wealthier side of the city. This is strongly based on the St. Louis Cemetery in New Orleans. The reason for the majority of graves being above ground was because of the constant rain and flooding, which would frequently wash up both corpses and bones. Found in both the northeast and southwest areas of Saint-Denis are the shotgun houses. These iconic designs were originally used as construction homes and for temporary workers, but as time passed and the city's population became larger, they stuck around. In New Orleans, during the late 18th century, there were two disastrous fires, which led to the city building these structures, each one detached from its neighbour. This was intended to prevent the spread of fires. The original design came from West Africa before finding itself in the Caribbean and then Haiti, before finally landing in New Orleans. Towards the edge of the city, players may come across the Hotel La Licorne, and apologies if I pronounce that incorrectly. The building, although inaccessible to the player, stands pretty distinctive due to its sky blue design. Residents of New Orleans may recognize this building as a replica to the Commander's Palace restaurant in the center of the tree-lined garden district, which opened its doors to the public all the way back in 1893. There are quite a few other real-world references to New Orleans in Saint-Denis, so if you guys wish to see another video on this, or any settlement in particular, feel free to let me know in the comment section, or by finding me over on Instagram, that's at philbygaming. As a quick disclaimer to myself if you will, the city of New Orleans is not where I'm from, nor have I ever visited there. All of the research put into this video was strictly through the internet, so if I mislabeled anything or gave inaccurate information, I apologize. If you enjoyed what you saw today, be sure to hit like, and if you aren't subscribed to the channel already, consider doing so. You've been listening to Phil, and I'll see you all in the next one.